Hello students welcome to the session of atoms and molecules in this session we are going to discuss about ions how these ions are formed see there are two types of ions the cations and the anion now the positively charged ions are called as cations whereas the negatively charged ions are called as anions so we'll be discussing about their formation and also about the formation of ionic compounds so let's start our theory session here an ion is a positively or negatively charged atom right now there are of two types cations and anions now what are cations cations are positively charged species and are formed when a metal atom loses electrons see this is one of the basic characteristic of metals that they are electropositive that they lose electrons and non metals gain electrons so metals attain 8 electrons in their valence shell by losing electrons right whereas non metals attain or complete their octet or attain 8 electrons in their valence shell by gaining electrons see students is this is the basic difference between metals and non metals metals are electropositive that is metals lose electron and form positive ion whereas non metals gain electrons and form negative ions cations are represented by symbol of element and positive sign as superscript let's take a few examples let's take up this example of sodium cation how is sodium cation formed i told you what is the configuration of sodium it is 2 8 and 1 now it can attain a 2 8 configuration by losing one electron right 2 8 is the configuration of noble gas atom that is of neon right now it can attain this noble gas configuration by losing one electron so it loses one electron and it forms a sodium cation now why so there is a positive charge this is because say the number of protons is equal to number of electrons in an atom now when it loses one electrons what happens say in sodium get sodium atom there are 11 protons and 11 electrons now when it is losing one electron it is forming what it is forming a sodium cation because in the sodium cation the number of protons is still equal to 11 and the number of electrons is equal to 10 now why so because it has lost one electron and so it has formed a sodium cation and it has its electronic configuration 2 8 that is 8 electrons in its outermost shell or valence shell it's outermost shell you can say right so what will be its valency valency is still another new term for you what is it what is valency valency is the combining capacity valency is the combining capacity of an element right or it can be also defined as the number of electrons an 
atom or the number of electrons atom of an element loses or gains or shares to form a compound right so in this case see here what will be the valency of sodium it's 1 why because it is losing this one electron forming a sodium cation which will then combine with an anion we'll proceed to it later we'll move to it later now let's take example of another cation See, this is potassium atom. Potassium atom. The electronic configuration is two eight eight one. Again, it will lose one electron and will attain a noble gas configuration that is two eight eight. Right. So this is also a potassium cation. And in potassium cation, the number of protons is equal to how much? Nineteen. Whereas the number of electrons is equal to 18 Let's take one more example See this is magnesium magnesium atom the configuration is 282 that is a electronic configuration now if you know the atomic number i have discussed this in the previous session if you know the atomic number see the atomic number of magnesium is 12 it means the number of protons in magnesium is equal to 12 and an atom is electrically neutral so number of electrons will be also equal to 12 now how are they distributed 2 8 2 that is a k shell l shell and m shell now it loses these two electrons and forms magnesium cation which has got a noble gas configuration that is 2 8 here again in this ion the number of protons is equal to 12 whereas the number of electrons is equal to 10 right how it is written the symbol of element magnesium raised to the power positive charge and how much positive charge is there so it has lost two electrons or it has got two excess protons so it is written as 2 plus let's take another example calcium atom what is the electronic configuration 2 8 8 and 2 this can also lose two electrons and form calcium cation Now in this calcium cation again, the number of protons is equal to twenty, and the number of electrons is equal to eighteen. So this is the way how cations are formed. Likewise, aluminium it forms Al three plus ion. The electronic configuration, or uh, let's take up the atomic number of aluminium. is 13 it means the number of protons in aluminium is 13 and this is also equal to the number of electrons and it is also equal to 13 now what will be the configuration say for an electrically neutral atom the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons so what will be the configuration that is what is configuration it is a distribution of electrons so it would be 2 8 and 3 so the number of electrons in outermost shell or valence shell now that is equal to how much 3 so this aluminium what it can do it can lose three electrons right see here aluminium the configuration is 2 8 and 3 so it will lose three electrons and will form al 
3 plus ion with the configuration 2 and 8. Right? Why so 3 plus? Because in this still there are 13 protons but the number of electrons is equal to 10. Fine? So this is the way they form cations. So students remember metals form cations as they are, they are electropositive. They have the tendency to lose electron and attain a noble gas configuration. Now they are charged species, they are not at all stable. Right? Now they will combine with the respective anion and form the compound. Let's discuss about anions now. What are anions? Anions are negatively charged species and are formed when the atom of an element gains electrons. Anions are represented by symbol of element and the negative sign as superscript. That is a, with the magnitude also. With a number also. See here it is an example. This is chlorine atom. The atomic number of chlorine is 17. Right? So what will be the number of protons in chlorine? It will be 17 only. The number of electrons will also be 17. So how will they be distributed in different shells? 2, 8 and 7. Right? Now it can't lose 7 electrons. See students, if it will lose 7 electrons, still it can have 2, 8 configuration. But then the number of protons will be 17 and the number of electrons will be 10. Which is not at all possible. Right? So what it does, it takes up one electron and forms chloride ion. Right? Why so negative charge? Because in this ion, the number of protons is equal to how much? 17. Whereas the number of electrons in chloride ion is equal to 18. 288. Noble gas configuration. Right? And it has now become stable. So this is the way how anions are formed. Let's take up one more example. The oxygen atom. Atomic number 8. Right? Number of protons 8. Number of electrons 8. Right? The configuration 2 and 6. How it will attain 8 electrons in its outermost shell? By gaining two electrons. So if it gains two electrons, the outermost configuration becomes eight. That is in the outermost shell, it is now having eight electrons. Right? So what will be the configuration now? It will be two, eight. And the ion formed is oxide ion. Because in this, the number of protons is still how much? 8, whereas the number of electrons has become 10. Likewise, take this example of nitrogen atom. The atomic number of nitrogen is 7. So the number of protons in nitrogen will be equal to 7. And the number of electrons in the nitrogen will also be equal to 7. How these electrons will be distributed? 2 and 5. Right? How it will complete its octet? By gaining 3 electrons. So it takes up 3 electrons and forms nitride ion. Right? So this is the way how anions are formed. Cations are formed by losing of electrons by the atom of an element. Whereas anions are formed by gaining of an electron by the atom of an element. Right? Cations are positively charged and ions are negatively charged. Now that we have studied about the ions formed, the cations and the anions. So, let's study about the ionic compounds. See students, it's not that you have kept sodium pellets and it will form sodium ion there. It doesn't happen like that. Or you have got chlorine gas and it is forming chlorine ions. No. Ions are formed in aqueous medium. Remember that. 
ionic reactions that is the formation of ions the formation of ionic bond this all takes place in aqueous medium so it will not happen that you have got uh, some sodium or a few sodium pellets in your hand and or in a uh, this uh, petri dish or beaker or whatsoever it is and it will form sodium ion not at all it will form sodium ion or any of the ions are formed in aqueous medium do remember this this is very very important ionic reactions take place in aqueous medium right so the compounds which are made up of ions are also known as ionic compounds if sorry in an ionic compound the positively charged ions that is the cations and negatively charged ions that is the anions are joined together by strong electrostatic forces of attraction the charge the force of attraction between the charged particles is called as what electrostatic force of attraction so in ionic compounds the force of attraction between the charged entities is what electrostatic force of attraction and then it forms an ionic compound let's see the formation of sodium chloride how sodium chloride is formed sodium atom it has got one electron in its valence shell it loses one electron and chlorine atom gains one electron and finally forming this sodium ion and chlorine ion or this is chloride ion actually right so this is chloride ion right and the compound formed is sodium chloride not sodium chlorine so forming sodium chloride fine so there is see there is a positive charge and negative charge now between these charges there is electrostatic force of attraction between these two charged entities that is sodium is a positive charge entity and chlorine is a chloride is a negative charge entity so between these two species there is electrostatic force of attraction and this electrostatic force of attraction is called as bond and this bond is what ionic bond right likewise there is a formation of calcium chloride also in this case what happens calcium it loses its two electrons say so it is losing it is losing two electrons forming ca2 plus ion and the two electrons it is losing say one is gained by one chlorine atom and the other is gained by another chlorine atom forming two chloride ions now the force of attraction between these opposite charged entities is what electrostatic force of attraction and the compound formed is calcium chloride right likewise ionic compound is magnesium chloride also aluminum chloride also in aqueous medium remember that otherwise alcl3 is not an ionic compound in dry in gaseous phase it is a covalent compound So magnesium chloride is an ionic compound aluminum chloride is an ionic compound right so this is the way how compounds are formed now students we have to study or discuss about the technique for writing the formulae of chemical compounds see here we have not written calcium chloride we have written here cacl2 likewise the formula of sodium chloride is nacl the formula of magnesium chloride is mgcl2 the formula of aluminum chloride is alcl3 now how come this we are writing the formula like this can we write alcl no it will be wrong 
Here, in case of ionic compounds, you can understand. Fine, it is losing two calcium is losing two electrons to two chlorine atoms, so the formula should be CaCl two. Magnesium again, it has got two electrons in its valence shell. Do you remember? It is see magnesium. The atomic number is equal to. Twelve, not twenty. It's twelve, right? It's electronic configuration, or say the atomic number is twelve. So the number of protons will be equal to twelve, and the number of electrons will also be equal to twelve. So what will be the configuration? It will be two, eight, and two, and chlorine. Cl, we know the configuration. It is two, eight, and seven. So it will lose its two electrons to two chlorine atoms. See, there are two electrons over here. Cl, Cl. This is losing one to this, losing one to this, forming what? Magnesium two plus ion and chlorine negative and chlorine negative ion. Now there is a force of attraction between these, and it will form a compound called as magnesium chloride. So now we have to discuss about the technique for writing the chemical formula, right? Now chemical formula, what is it? A chemical formula represents the composition of a molecule. Composition means what all atoms are present, or what all the atoms of elements are present, of this substance in terms of the symbols of elements present in the molecule. Say, for example, the chemical formula of water. Now, if I write simply water, I not know what all uh, atoms are present there. Or what all elements are there in the water molecule? Now the chemical formula of water is H two O. What it suggests that water contains water molecule is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. So what the chemical formula represents? It represents the composition of a molecule. Of a substance in terms of symbols of elements present in the molecule, right? While writing the formula of a molecular compound like sulfur dioxide, like sodium chloride, like carbon tetrachloride, the less electronegative non-metal atom is written on the left-hand side. Whereas the more electronegative non-metal atom is written on the right-hand side. See, the statement is not very difficult. Less electronegative atom means the one which has less tendency to accept electrons. See, less electronegative atom. Now, if I'm taking two examples, carbon and chlorine, what is the atomic number of carbon? The atomic number is equal to six. It means the number of protons in carbon is equal to six, and electrons in carbon is also six. What will be the configuration now? The electronic configuration or distribution of electrons in shells? It will be two and four. Whereas chlorine, atomic number seventeen. So number of protons is equal to seventeen, which is also equal to the number of electrons. The configuration or the distribution of electrons in chlorine. It would be two, eight, and seven. Now, students, in case of carbon, how many electrons are needed to for carbon atom to complete its octet? 
it needs four electrons to complete its octet whereas chlorine it requires only one electron to complete its octet now what they do is now in this case it is saying the same thing the less electronegative atom that is a carbon carbon is the less electronegative atom whereas chlorine it has got a highly electronegative atom because it has got seven electrons and it will quickly pull one electron right what is electronegativity it is the tendency negativity it is the tendency of atom of an element to gain electrons so chlorine has got more tendency so in the chemical formula how it will be written ccl4 not cl4c this is wrong fine so whatever is more electronegative is written on the right hand side and less electronegative is written on the left hand side right so this is the case like so2 among these sulfur is less electronegative whereas oxygen is more electronegative that is oxygen has got more tendency to pull electrons towards itself as compared to sulfur right now let's take up the next point in naming the molecular compounds the name of less electronegative non metal is written as such but the name of more electronegative non metal is changed to have the ending id like ccl4 i have taken its example so the name of this compound will be carbon tetra chloride from where this tetra word has come there are four chlorine atoms so we'll use tetra likewise if i'm taking so2 so which is less electronegative over here it is sulfur so sulfur then how many atoms of oxygen are there two so it's di and then oxygen is more electronegative so it in, it is written as oxide right so this is the way how the name of compounds is written there's another compound that is na2o so this is what sodium oxide here we'll not write disodium oxide the name of the cation or the less electronegative non metal here it's metal is written as such whereas the name of the more electronegative non metal ends with id right like al4c3 the name of this compound will be aluminum carbide right so the name of the less electronegative this is a metal again it is written as such aluminum and the more electronegative ends with id so do remember students that the more the name of the more electronegative element ends with id fine right? 